So we want to talk about compound inequalities. Now before we had talked about just regular linear inequalities, said one inequality in it. We want to talk about things that are a little bit more complex, a little more complicated. Uh, sometimes you'll see inequalities and you'll have the word and between them. Now when we see the word and, that means we were talking about an intersection. And with an intersection, you're basically looking for um, what, do the, what do the inequalities have in common? What do they have in common? Or maybe where do they overlap? Because it's that overlapping section, which is the intersection. Okay. Now, an example of this guy could be something like this. X is greater than 5, and X is less than or equal to 11. Okay. We have two inequalities here. I've got this word and right here in the middle. That word, man, that word and means intersection. What solutions do these guys have in common? Where do they overlap? Where do they intersect? Okay. Now, one of the ways that we have for graphing this out is making sure we understand where the numbers are that we're dealing with, which of course would be 5 and 11. But what does it mean for x is greater than 5? What does that mean? What does it mean to be x is greater than 5, or for x is greater than 5? It means an open circle at 5 going out to the right. Do you all agree? But since we're only looking for the intersection, for what they have in common, I'm going to sketch this out above the graph like this. So x is greater than 5 would be something like this, going all the way out to the right. What if I had less than or equal to 11? What does that look like? Circle. Closed circle going out to the left. Do you all agree? Now my question to you is, you know, this is my x is greater than 5, and this is x is less than or equal to 11. Where do these guys overlap? What solutions will they have in common? Anything between 5 and 11, look at this. See right here is where these guys overlap, right here. So in between 5 and 11, you have numbers that satisfy both of those inequalities. So it's not good enough to work for just one in this case. It has to work for both of them. So you pick a number between 5 and 11, like 7. Is 7 greater than 5? Yes. And is 7 also less than or equal to 11? So that works out. Now, is 5 included? Is 5 a solution for both of them? It's a solution here because 5 is less than or equal to 11, right? Mm -hmm. But is 5 included in the top inequality? No. no, so he has to remain open. What about 11? Is 11 included? Yes. Are you sure? It is clearly greater than 5. It's not less than 11, but we do have the or equal to part right here. So it's included for both of these, which means it's going to be included here. And then what does that look like for my interval notation? The parentheses 5, comma, negative, It's going to be from 5 to 11, parentheses on the 5, bracket on the 11, right? Remember, the parentheses means you can get as close to 5 as you want to without touching it. The 11 with a bracket means you can get all the way up to 11, and you can actually include that. You can touch that and grab onto it. You guys agree with that? Okay. So this and symbol, we see, or this and word, we, we see that a lot of times, even if you're looking at prerequisites for a class. Prerequisites may say that you have to have taken, you know, one class and you have to have taken another class, right? So in order to take this class, you have to have taken these two other ones before, right? Well, what if we change the restrictions and we say the word or? If I say x is greater than 12, or x is less than 6. I say or means something entirely different. Or means a union. 
And when we see a union, that means we just put all solutions together. Put all solutions together. You don't have to be the same. It doesn't matter. It just says put everything together. Okay. <laughs> so if you were looking at a class that said you have to have taken this class or this other class, what does that mean to you? One or the other. One or the other. Do you have to have taken both? No. Could you have taken both? Yeah, but do you have to? Not when you've got the word or. So with union, I'm going to put everything together. So if I look at this on a number line, please remember that there is order for the real numbers. So since there's order, what number is on the left? Six is on the left, 12 is more on the right. So grab each of these guys. And here I don't need to do anything like I did with the and where I have it <coughs> and just got sketched out above. I can put everything together on one number line and then describe what I see. And so the reason why you're doing that is because x is less than 6, that's to the left, or from left to right? Well, I'm the numbers I'm most concerned with are the numbers 6 and 12. And so in terms of the number line and how the real numbers are ordered, 6 is on the left of 12. Because it's less than that. Yeah. So if I look at uh, x is greater than 12, that would be an open circle at 12 and, right. and shading out to the right. x is less than 6 means what? It's open and open to the left. Open at 6 and shading out to the left. Do you all agree? Now, do these intervals have anything in common? Do they intersect each other? No. 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 But does it matter? Am I looking for an intersection? Mm -hmm. No. I'm just asking you guys to take the solutions for each of these, put it together, and describe what you see. Well, this is my graph to describe what I see. So anything that's less than 6 or greater than 12 would satisfy this. So if I picked a number over here, say 20, is 20 greater than 12? OK. Is 20 less than 6? No. But do I have to satisfy both of those? Just one or the other. So is 20 greater than 12? Yes, so that's good. I either have to be true for this or for that. Okay? Just like getting out of jury duty, right? You could be a student or you could be active military or you could be a primary caregiver for, you know, an elderly person or for a child, right? Do you have to be all of those? Just one, right? Just one will get you out of jury duty. And I got nothing. <coughs> you guys can get out. But I, as your teacher, can't. You're a kid, though. You're kids. Can't you just like these Do they have someone that can watch them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, at least where I at least where I live, you know, juries consist of six people. <coughs> Describe what you see here on the left. What do you see? Excellent. Using interval notation correctly. The left part would be described using what? A, uh, infinity. Negative infinity to six parentheses, right? Four. How do I describe the other part? Twelve. Twelve. Now, I need to join these guys together because union says put everything together. So what I do is I use this symbol right here. And this is my union symbol. Okay. No, 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 no. It's not the letter U. I'm gonna let you in on something right now. If you write your union symbol like this, I will circle the tail, surgically remove it, and I'm gonna charge you some points. Because this guy, if you look at it, it's not the actual letter U. It's a symbol, and it, it looks like a U. But it's not actually a letter. You guys with me? Just like you said, well, that's, that's an 8. No, it really isn't an 8. Well, he's just sleeping. <laughs> that's, that's the infinity symbol. Do symbols correctly and precisely, and you'll go far, just like me.